Hi, George here. We're going to be using the Affinity Photo Background Removal Brush to remove the sky in here and then change this picture to look like that. There are a few more tweaks in here, a few more tricks to get this to look as nice as possible, and I'll show you all of that in this video. And the first thing we need to do is just to get rid of all this stuff that we don't need. I'm going to delete all of these layers. Hit the trash can right there. There we go. And here is the original image. And the first thing you should always do whenever you're doing a photo retouching project is to make a duplicate of the background. So go over here, just click on the name and choose duplicate. There's our duplicate. I'll hide the original. And this is now just a safety. If we mess up this, we can always go back to the original right there. It's saved in the project. So that gives us a nice safety on that. Okay, so now take a look at the background removal brush. I'll zoom in over here, left hand side. You can move the image around by holding down the space bar. Back out just a touch. I think that's pretty good size right there. And you'll find the tool right over here. Here's the eraser brush, and just down below that is your background eraser brush. If it's not popping out, just hold your mouse down for a second and you'll see that. Across the top up here, with this set at 20 pixels, that looks pretty good. Opacity at 100, that's good. Flow 100%, that's fine. Hardness 80%, those all look pretty nice. Over here, tolerance of 10 is correct for Affinity Photo. Now, Affinity Photo tends to be rather aggressive on this background removal and it's going to be taking out a lot of image that has just a little bit of the coloration in there. So you want to keep your tolerance fairly low in Affinity Photo. That's different from other programs. Other programs are a bit more lenient on that. Affinity Photo is pretty aggressive. And then on this, we'll leave the contiguous selected. That just means it's only going to be taking out pixels that are touching. Okay, now to use this, you come over the edge. You have most of this brush over the area you want to remove, and then you just overlap into the area that you want to keep, just like that. There we go, and Affinity Photo removes the area that you're over mostly, and then stops removing when it begins to see an overlap happening in there. And we'll just work around in here, just like this. Now notice there is some blue left along over here and a little bit on the edge down there, and that's just a bleed over from the background. We'll take care of that in a separate step. Now I have found sometimes with Affinity Photo, you have to do this a couple of times for it to actually take. That's okay. If it doesn't do anything on the first brush, just go back and do it a second time. I have nothing in there. Do it a second time. And there we go. If it misses any bit, we'll take care of that in a second pass on this. And when you're doing this, you want to go clear around the whole image and the whole sky. Don't worry about these spots in here. We'll fix those as we go. And only do just this first row here, this first brush width. We'll take care of the rest of the sky using the regular eraser brush. We don't need that right now. The reason for that is that as you're doing this, Affinity Photo is going in and looking at things, finding that edge, doing a lot of figuring in here, and it tends to cause some slowness on the brush. Once we get away from the edge of the building, we then can use a regular eraser and we'll go much, much faster. So we'll do this just to get the sky off of the building and then switch our tools over. And just work straight down, and it'll just come into the edge here. There we go. And just kind of work in towards that edge. And this should be just fine. Okay, that worked out well. And we'll finish working around the edge of the house in here and get the right side taken care of. You can be a little lenient on where you're moving it over on the overlap. Just make sure that most of the brush is in the sky area and just part of the brush is overlapping into the edge of that roof. Okay, I'll come around down this side over here. Same problem here with that drain pipe. We'll just go along that edge and we'll come back and get that intersection in a second pass through on this. There we go. Just move on down like that and down to the finish. Okay. Let's take care of these two sections. For this, I'm going to zoom in just a bit more. A couple of spots there. Let's grab the polygonal lasso tool. Here's our lasso tools. There's the polygonal right there. I'll leave everything else here at the defaults. Making a new selection, that's correct. Zero feathering, that's just fine. And I'll just make a little selection just inside here. There we go. Then back to our eraser tool, and we'll get that middle section. Okay, Control D to deselect. 
I'll hold the space bar down. Let's go over here to the other side quickly. Into the same thing for this drain. All right, here we go. Let's just come in here, put in our little selection to mark out that area. There we go. Back to the eraser and just take that out. And then control D. All right, at this point, I'm going to change my eraser tools over to the regular erase brush tool. And then we can take this out further. Now, what I recommend here is bringing it out about another brush width away. And now we can come in and get these couple little spots in here that didn't quite work out well. And take it out just a bit further and fix those edges. And doing this with the same size brush, we'll then come back and use a larger brush to take care of all the rest of the sky. Once we get it a little ways away from the edge of the house, we have some room in there to work. Okay, and right down here, clean that up. And there we go. Okay, so it's pretty fast as you can see. It's much faster erasing with this brush since it's not having to think about where those edges are, any of that kind of stuff. It's doing a lot less work, which makes the regular, which makes the regular erase brush a lot faster. If I tried doing all this stuff with that background eraser, it would take me a lot longer because it was kind of hit and miss on there and it takes some time to figure the whole thing out, which is no longer needed. Okay, we're down here to the last little bit. There we go. We can now zoom back out. I'm just going to do a control zero to zoom out. There's that edge. Let's go back to our eraser tool and I'll bring the size up here to 100 pixels much bigger and we can now just get rid of the rest of this sky in there. You can see why I wanted some space in there to get us away from that house. And then this goes really fast at this real large size. But you have to have a bit of working room in there to be able to use this large of a brush up against the building like that. Okay. You see how fast that goes once we're using the right size brush in here. Around this side, and there we go. We've now removed that sky. And let's zoom back in over here again. There's a little bit of a cyan in there, and a couple of little spots I missed in here. We can get those real fast with the eraser tool. And I'll just tap those out just like that. There we are. You can see just a little bit of blue in here happening on that edge. I don't want to have that there because this is kind of a cyan blue, and we're bringing in a sky with a different color blue. And this would stand out pretty strongly. We need to solve that one and a couple more little things i think i see in here i'm going to use the eraser brush and bring my size down just using the left square bracket for that and just a little bit of cleanup in a couple of spots there we go okay now the easy way to do this is just to convert those blue tones into grayscale they'll blend in with that edge of the house they'll blend in with the roof real easily so for that I'll go over here to the burn brush tool, hold your mouse down, and you want the sponge brush at the bottom. There's a pretty small size here, that's at 24 pixel. I'm going to change this just down to 20 pixel. Opacity at 25%, that's okay. Flow at 100, that's fine. Hardness at zero is okay. Everything else looks fine across here. Right here where it says saturate and desaturate, make sure that desaturate is selected, it's the dark one there. If it's light, it's not selected. If it goes dark, it is selected. And now all we have to do is just brush over that edge and it's going to convert that blue tone into a gray tone. You know, then just blend right in with the building. And it's a little slow in here. So I think I'm going to change my opacity up here just to 100%. We don't need it that low. See, that's any better. That's better. There we go, real fast. So a little bit of blue right in here. I think I can take that out and it will look out fine because that wall is almost gray. Again, space bar to move your image. And then just work around the edge here and convert any of that blue tone. It's kind of sitting on the edge over into a gray tone. And just quickly make this adjustment. Now, if you see anything like this happening in here, let's just go over here to the eraser tool and take that out real fast. And then back to our sponge tool to desaturate. There we go. Again, just taking the blue out of it. And we're clear around, get all those edges. Up here, there's some blue here and 
you can take that out, make it gray or not if you want it. It's up to you. I'm going to leave that in. I think that's fine. So I'll be a little bit more careful along that edge. There we go. Let's make those gray. And I see a little bit up in here, a little blue spot right here, a little blue spot right there. I'll just take those out. Little touch-ups in there. And then back to that sponge brush, our desaturation tool. Take all the blue out of this vent up here. We don't need any blue in that. And we'll finish up over here on the right-hand side of the picture. This is one of those little touches that makes a huge, huge difference. You'd really spot that light blue outline once we change the picture over to the other sky. It would really stand out. So it seems like a small little detail, but actually it's a very big one on the quality of your final output. Now over here, I'm just going to be in really close on that edge and not go into the wall. That's more of a yellow as opposed to a blue tone, so that would not work out well if I went in there and made that gray. And we'll finish up right down here. Okay, control zero back to fit screen. That's all looking great. We can now bring in our background picture. I'll just open that up, file, and have it right over here. I have downloaded links for both these pictures in the description if you want to use these same images to practice with. Here we go. I'm just going to float this window, just drag that, drop it down here, and then take that background layer, drag it over here onto this picture, and that brings it in there. We can then close this window down. And then over here, there's a little padlock. Click on that to get rid of that padlock. Layer is now not locked. And this is the exact same size. So I'll make this just a little bit larger just for some ease in here. And if you look at the bottom of this cloudy picture, notice how it gets lighter and less contrasty down here towards the bottom and the clouds get flatter. And it gets more contrasty as it goes up here, more saturated, and the clouds get puffier. I want to be using the bottom part of this in our picture, but I want to have a bit of this in here as well. So what I'm going to do is take this bottom control handle. I'm just going to pull that up and squeeze the picture vertically. There we go. And it'll be about right in here. Let's now go over to the layers. I'll take that layer and I'll pull it down underneath the background layer. There we are. And there's our new sky in there looking really nice. Now notice how the windows no longer match the sky. That was the old blue. This is the new blue. We'd have the same kind of problem along those edges if we hadn't fixed those edges. we will be doing two things in here to adjust this. First, I'll bring in some more contrast and color saturation for the sky area. And then we'll come back in and adjust the coloration of the windows in here. And with those two, I'll kind of bring them both towards each other, both of them towards the middle, and find a happy ground where they look like they're all in the same proper picture. Over here, let's just name our layers. Just double click on that layer. You can give it a new name. That's our sky layer. And this one is the house layer right there. Okay, we know what we're working with on the sky layer. And let's do an adjustment layer on this. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. And you'll start off with levels. Then I'm just going to bring the white in a bit here. Kind of brightens things up, makes them a bit more contrasty. I'll do the exact same thing with the black level, pull that in just a little bit, get a bit more color happening in there. So we're just squeezing down the contrast range just a little bit in there, and I think that is better. You'll close that one. So there's before and here's after. So you brighten it up quite a bit. And I want to also put a bit more saturation in here. So same thing, let's go back up here to this layer, go up here to layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer. This time I want the Hue Saturation right here, Luminance HSL. And on the middle control here, the Saturation, I'm just going to bring this over to the right just a little bit. It gives a little bit more saturation. What I'm looking for is the quality of the light to be about the same brightness and saturation as the windows, different color, but the quality is about the same. I think that looks pretty close. Okay, now we can work on adjusting this layer and tone down the blues in those windows and get them closer to the coloration over in here. Let's do one more thing before we move into that, and that is to link these adjustment layers into the layers that they're on. So choose the top HSL layer, pull that down so it's underneath the house and onto the sky layer, and then pull the levels adjustment into that sky layer as well. There we go. And these are only being applied to the sky. If I hide that, notice that nothing changes aside from just the sky. So those are now linked into the sky where they should be. Let's now go up here to the house layer 
and we'll do a color shift on this one. Again, layer, come down to new adjustment layer. And this time we'll use selective color right here. And in this, right at the top here, here's our basic color. I want to only be working with the cyans. Those windows are basically cyan. So we can now bring in some less cyan on that. You see there's more cyan, here's less. That helps a lot. Give it a little bit more magenta in there. And what I'm looking for is to try to match this coloration up in the sky someplace. It's a little bit of a back and forth, but that looks pretty close right here. And then we can lighten it up just a little bit. And there we go, that's a much better match on the windows. We can now show and hide that. There's before and here's after. So the windows now have a much closer match to our new sky coloration. Okay, that part of the house is all finished. We only have one last thing to do. And if you look right down here, it's right by the front door. I'm just going to zoom in on this. And notice how there are a couple of trash cans hiding there. Pretty ugly, especially that blue one in behind this rock. Let's just take care of those things. Now we're on that house layer again. And again, before we do that, I'm just going to take this color adjustment layer into the house layer. Double check. There we go. It's linked into the house and that's where it should be. Okay, on this layer, we'll go over here to a lasso tool and we'll use that polygonal lasso right there. And I'll start right down here, right in the driveway in that shadow area. I'll pull it across and then right around this rock, let's make a little selection right around the rock. I'm coming into the rock just a touch where it's against that blue of that trash can. I don't want to have any blue showing up here. The brown on the other side, not as critical. If there's a little bit of brown showing, no one's going to spot it, but that blue they'll see. So we'll make sure that we're away from that. Okay, open this side. Come in and let's walk around the rock here just a little bit. There we go. And back down over to here and down to the same spot. Straight across a little ways and then up around and bring it back to the beginning point. There's our selection. So we'll now only be changing things inside the selection that just protects that rock in front. You can now use the clone stamp tool right there. There's a clone stamp size. It's a little bit on the large side. I'm going to use the left square bracket and just bring the size down a bit. I think that's better. Everything else looks fine in here. I'll leave all those at the defaults. Then hold the Alt key down, grab part of this wall up here, bring that down, and then line up the lines on that so it looks proper. And let's just paint down just a bit in here and take care of that trash can. I'll bring in some of this bush right there. And a bit of the wall right down here, we'll bring that over. There we go, that takes care of the blue trash can, that's gone. Same thing over here. On this one, because of this kind of a subtle gradient back in here, I want to do a little bit of a difference on this. I want to bring my size up a bit on the brush. There we go, and then click up here, Alt-click, bring it down, and that's... And the reason why I went just a little bit larger is to help with this kind of a gradient problem in there, where it's trying to make a different gradient for us. There we go. And then to finish this off, I'll bring the size up again on the brush. Bring it up pretty large like that. Alt and click and then come down here and just kind of tap into those edges. And that should do a good job to hide that. Looks good. Okay. Control D to deselect and Control zero back to fit screen. And there we go. There's our finished photograph with the new sky in here. Trash cans gone. Edge looks really clean. And the sky removed using that background eraser brush. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. And if you want to learn more about how to use Affinity Photo, take a look at my complete training course for that. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.